Hello fellow scientists and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for the Scientist and boy are we going to be having some fun today. Uh, well, maybe not a ton of fun, but we'll be looking at something that's very important and of course that is document setup. Um, so what we're looking at here is what we're going to be working towards today. Uh, just a regular white document with a couple of immunofluorescence images in it. And um, so document setup may not be the most exciting thing you can do in Photoshop, but it is very important to think about. So I know when I would get some data, I used to just sort of whip things together or dump things into PowerPoint for lab meeting uh, without really thought about where I was going or what, I, what kind of figure I was going to be making in the future. But I always found myself in that situation when I started making my figures, I would go to the journal's website to see figure submission guidelines and find out that the figures I had created didn't match their guidelines at all, and I'd basically have to start from scratch again. So, although uh, it may not be so exciting, it's important to think about right from the beginning because it'll save yourself a real headache uh, later on down the road. So I know most of you, or at least I never really had an idea of what journal I was going to be submitting to, um, but luckily for us, most journals are pretty much the same in terms of what they're looking for uh, with their figures or at least their file formats. So what I've done here is just load up uh, PLOS One as an example and I'm in their uh, submission center and you can go down and look at their file requirements. So we scroll down here and so we'll look through this table here of what they're looking for. So for file formats they're looking for either TIFF or EPS. So EPS is basically a vector file format so if you have like a schematic or some sort of diagram uh, that uses vector-based images, you'll want to use an EPS. But for our, our purposes, or probably most of the time, you're going to be using TIFF, which is just a lossless file format that retains all of the image information, as opposed to, you know, JPEG or GIF or GIF, I guess. Um, so moving on, file size under 10 megabytes, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. Okay, uh, dimensions here. So this is this is something that we should probably take a look at. Uh, the maximum image dimensions they're looking for here are 7.5 inches wide by 8.75 inches in height, and the minimum width that they want here is 2.63 inches. So we'll keep that in mind when we go back to our document. White space, crop out the extra white, uh, no problem. Color mode, RGB, 8 bits per channel, no problem. That's the default usually. Text within figures, Arial Time or Times, those are essentially the most common fonts that you'll ever see, so that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, lines and Stroke, minimum of five points, uh, we won't need that today. Um, all parts in one image, that's fine. So TIFF, uh, this, is, this is something I always used to get dinged on, the resolution. Um, so they're asking for 300 to 600 PPI. And so it's important to set this up from the beginning. Uh, 300 is basically just standard for print and that should be just fine for our purposes. 600 uh, you probably don't need unless I don't know maybe your image is grayscale or if it's really small but generally 300 ppi is, is just fine. Uh, layers, no layers so fully flattened image that's fine. Alpha channels we're not really worried about right now uh, this is if you're creating special masks or selections, selections of your image which we will cover in a later lesson but for today we won't worry about. Compression, LZW, uh, I'm not going to even pretend to understand that I, or pretend that I understand the algorithm uh, for compression. Uh, LZW stands for the, the last names of the three f guys who came up with it, but basically all you need to know is that with uh, the image that I, or rather the figure that we're building today, um, without compression it's about 20 megabytes and with compression it's uh, about one to two, so keep that in mind. And there's no loss of information, so we're we're perfectly fine there. Background color white, uh, not transparent, and uh, yeah, not a problem. <coughs> so if we go back into Photoshop, uh, we can close this off for now. Um, the first thing we'll want to do, obviously, is say file new. And I've already entered in all of the parameters here from practicing this earlier, but if we remember from uh, the website, it was looking for a width of 7.5 inches by a height of 8.75 inches, resolution 300 ppi, RGB 8-bit background white, so that's all good. Now what we can actually do here is uh, save this preset and let's call it PLOS1 
configure and click OK and so now on our preset drop down menu here we can come back to this every time we open Photoshop and these parameters will be locked in and that will just save us from having to re-enter them every time uh, we can give our document a name which we can stick with the good old figure one <clears throat> and then we'll click OK and here we have it so this is our first document and I guess the next thing uh, so basically we can start right here but usually what I like to do is lay out a couple of guides and that's what you would have seen in the final image before with sort of those cyan lines that were running uh, horizontally and vertically down the document and so what these guides are for is just to help you imagine the layout of your document it allows you to snap your um, panels into place make sure everything is spaced out properly so how we can do this uh, well let's say let's set up a guide showing what the minimum width of this document can be so remember plus one specified that a minimum width of 2.63 inches was necessary so to do this we'll say view new guide and a vertical guide for width and position here we can just type in 2.63 inches and then hit enter and there it is so with this guide here we know that our figure or at least our information on our figure has to be at least from 0 to 2.63 um, if it's bigger than that it's not a problem but this is sort of the minimum that we can uh, the minimum size um, so that's just an example of sticking in a new guide um, but there are plenty of other ways that you can bring in your guides uh, Usually the way that I tend to use, instead of having to click up through the menu, is just uh, if you have your move tool selected here, which you can push the V key as a shortcut, if you go up to your ruler, um, which if it's not visible, uh, you can say view rulers, or if you are more into keyboard short shortcuts, you can just hit control R to toggle it on and off. And so <clears throat> with your ruler vis rulers visible, you can take your move tool and just click and drag out from the ruler and drop it right in anywhere you want in your document. A uh, good thing to note when bringing in your uh, guidelines here is that if you are clicking and dragging and if you hold the shift key uh, it moves it in increments of 0.125 so that makes it a little easier just to line it up at say two inches or one inches where it already, one inch where it already is and it just makes it a little easier than trying to do it freehand. So let's say well imagine we're trying to create the document I showed at the beginning of the video uh, with a couple of immunofluorescence images and say we want these images to be one inch by one inch um, what we can do is set up our guides uh, right just at all of the one inch increments so uh, let's say we start with our vertical guides we just click and drag from the side here so we'll bring this one to two inches and then usually it's good to keep a little space in between your panels so we'll bring the next one out and let's say we'll give it 0.125 inches of space bring the next one out so an inch from there is 3.125 give it another 0.125 and I, I am holding the shift key here to make things a little easier for myself and we'll just keep dragging them out 4.25 and then 4.375 and 5.375 that should be enough for now and we'll bring one from the top so down to two inches and so we've got a couple of nice one inch by one inch squares and so I've gone ahead and made up just a couple of uh, here we are uh, example images and I've already sized these to be one inch by one inch ahead of time uh, we will cover that in a later movie but for the interest of time uh, I just have some easy simple ones here so I'm just going to drag them into my document and as you can see, uh, you might notice things, uh, I can drag it around, but it snaps to these guides. And so that just makes it really easy um, to get them positioned correctly. So I hit enter there to lock it in place. And same with the green. Uh, my, oop, oop, bring my merge, uh, shoot. Come on, there we go. Bring my merge one over there. Hit enter. And then bring my red and there's that and I'll click off <clears throat> and so it's laid out so let's say I want to go select one of these images later and whoopsies I've dragged my guide into the wrong spot that can be kind of annoying sometimes I'm just gonna hit control Z to undo that 
Um, so to avoid having this type of problem, what we can actually do is lock the guides in place. And when that happens, uh, it prevents you from clicking them and moving them out of position by accident. And all we need to do for that is go to the view and say lock guides. Or if you're into keyboard shortcuts, that's control alt semicolon. And so now when we try to click on the guides to move them, it's uh, we can't. They're locked in place. So that's just fine. Um, now another thing you might probably want to do is once you have your images in place, you may want to see what it looks like without the guides distracting your vision. And uh, we can do that quite easily. So again, if we go up to view, uh, you may be tempted to click clear guides. I mean, that seems sort of like the logical thing to do. Uh, but if you do that, you will be sorry because that's going to delete all of your guides and you'll have to set them all up again. Actually, I think you can probably just click undo, but it's still annoying. Um, what we do want to do, however, is go to show guides. And so see right now it's checked. And so if we click that, they disappear. Again, the easier thing to do is use the keyboard shortcut, which is control semicolon, and we can toggle them on and off quite easily. And so normally when I'm working in my document, uh, I'll toggle them on and off quite often, uh, move things around, see how it looks, maybe reposition my guides after. Um, so it's nice to be able to know how to do that quite quickly. So now I think I'm ready to save my document. Um, I know the journal said that we want to crop out the white space, but we'll come back to that in a later movie. But for now, uh, let's say we go up to File, and we'll say Save As. And so to save as uh, TIFF here, we'll go look at the Save As Type file menu, um, which sometimes it'll be on your Photoshop PSD as your default. But for today, uh, and for most cases, well, for the journal, like they're asking, we'll save it as a TIFF. And I'll save it in my Document Setup folder and figure one, that's fine. And then we'll click Save. And so for image compression, you'll remember they're looking for LZW, so we'll click that. All of these other defaults are fine. And we'll click OK. And it says increasing layers will increase the file size. So uh, I forgot to flatten the image, so we can say Cancel. Um, because like the journal was saying, uh, they want a flattened image. So what we can do here is uh, click layer compression and click discard layers. And so that will get rid of the layer information, but it'll also save a copy um, so that if we want to come back and work on this document later, we'll have another version with, with the layers that we can work on and uh, we won't be in trouble that way. So let's say OK. And it gets saved off as figure1.tiff. And that's all there is to it. So I think that'll do it for today. Check back for future videos. We'll crop out this white space, maybe add some text. I don't know, there's a whole world of options for us. But for now, thanks for watching. Uh, and remember, we spent a lot of time getting that data. So why not put in a little extra time and make sure that it looks great. All right, that's all for now. So thanks again. And this is Steve Holly, and I will see you next time.